Sewing knits on a sewing machine, it can be a pretty dreaded subject. I totally get you. And I remember when I first started sewing knits on my sewing machine, I had two questions that bothered me the most. One of them was, how do I make these really pretty seams on my knit garments without stretching a wholly waving mess out of the fabric and out of the garment? And number two, how do I finish the hems and the sleeves and the necklines of my knit garments that look crisp, professional, beautiful, and of course, durable. So today, let's make together a t-shirt for my little one entirely on a sewing machine. And I will give you along the way some simple tips and tricks for a beginner project like that. Of course, there are many more tips and tricks for sewing jersey and knit fabrics on your sewing machine, but these should get you started with what you already have at home so you don't have to go out and buy anything extra. So let's get started. The simple things that you will need for this project are of course your fabrics, your polyester thread, your needles. Now there are many kinds of different needles for different stretch fabrics like jersey and knits and stretch. I'm using just regular ballpoint needles. They say knit fabrics over here and these should do for the time being. The more advanced you're gonna get with your stretch fabrics, the more you're gonna get into what specific type of needles you're going to need. Now an iron is another great thing to have when you're sewing any project. It doesn't matter whether those are knit fabrics or woven fabrics. This is going to make a big difference. So if you don't already have an iron at home, definitely invest in one if you want to continue sewing. And a little piece of tissue paper is going to help you out as well, but it's totally optional. Now when you are sewing knits on a sewing machine, another thing that really makes a big difference is what kind of knit fabric you're actually using. So let's talk about that just for a second. So today we're going to work on this t-shirt for my little one and I believe this is just a very simple cotton jersey. I did buy this fabric ages ago and I don't have the tag with me anymore but I do believe it's just a very simple cotton jersey maybe with some three or five percent of other fabrics in it but it's not too lightweight. It's not really medium weight. The thickness is just right and my sewing machine is going to work with it really well. What I would not sew on my sewing machine is this rayon jersey for example. It does curl like this which makes it quite impossible to sew not only on a sewing machine but also on a serger so I would definitely not pick this fabric for a sewing machine project. And here's another t-shirt that I've been working on for my little one from Scrap Fabric. And I'm not sure if you can see this here or not, but this jersey is super thin and almost see-through, almost see-through. So this kind of lightweight fabric I would also not use on my sewing machine. Now there is such thing as stable knits. Now stable knits don't stretch as much, but they do behave really well when you're sewing them on your sewing machine. So definitely look into that and I will leave a link for more descriptive uh, information about stable knits in the info box below for you guys if you're interested. All right, so the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your t-shirt pattern, you're going to place the front and the back right sides together, and we're going to match them at the shoulder seams and at the side seams and pin them together. After that, you're going to take your needles and you're going to replace them on your sewing machine, and you're going to wind your bobbin with the correct color of thread. Four most common stretch stitches that I use when I sew knit fabrics on my sewing machine are zigzag stitch, three step zigzag, lightning stitch, and straight stretch stitch. And you've seen me use almost all of them in my sewing videos. Now for this particular garment, for a simple t-shirt, I am going to use a zigzag stitch, but I am going to make it smaller because in my opinion, it looks better and that's what I like. For you guys, of course, as I always say, find what works for you. Grab a scrap piece of fabric, practice on that one first, and then decide what will look the best on your garment. In some cases, not doing backstitching helps my sewing machine not chew up my fabric when I sew with knits. After that, you can just simply tie the knot at the beginning and the end of the seam. Sometimes you will see in videos me holding the garment at the back of the presser foot. That is not to stretch the fabric, but to rather guide it so that way the seam allowance stays the same throughout the garment, as the garment sometimes have the tendency to move to one side or the other. 
Now you will also often see me adjust the position of my presser foot as I'm sewing with knits. Definitely don't be afraid to do that. I usually lower my needle into the fabric itself, adjust the project and then I continue to sew. Remember, slow and steady wins the race in this situation. Next you're going to sew these seams of the sleeves. After the seams are done, do you see how they're slightly wavy over here and over here? This can be easily fixed with a good press from your iron. Always test on a scrap piece of fabric first to see if you can actually iron this fabric in case if you don't know the content of your material. And you can also place that piece of tissue paper between your iron and your fabric for an extra protection. Now inserting the sleeves is going to be exactly the same way as we did the shoulder seams and the side seams with exactly the same stitch. The only difference is that we're going to insert them in the round. However, you can also choose to do a flat method of inserting sleeves in the knits, which might be a little bit easier for you if you work on a sewing machine. And I will leave a very detailed video about that in the info box below for you. However, I do prefer an in the round method in some garments. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, so now that the sleeves are attached, there are three things that we need to do before we move on to the finishing touches. Number one, if you do have any seam allowances that are a tad bit uneven, go ahead and even them out, which is really easy to do. Just make sure that you don't cut through the stitches. Number two, all of the loose threads that I said that I usually tie in the knots, tie them in the nice, neat little knots, and then also give it another really good press. And then we will move on to the neckline, sleeves, and the bottom hem. If you attached your sleeves like me in the round, but now you're having a difficult time to press out the seams, then you can use your tailor's hem. But if you don't have a tailor's hem, here's a little trick. You can take a towel, fold it up, place it inside of your sleeve or underneath the seam that you want to press out, and then press. This works just as good. All right, so now on to the sleeves. For the sleeves, you can, of course, fold them over and just do a top stitching with a zigzag stitch. However, sometimes it can be a little bit challenging to do that in a very neat manner. And once done, if it's not necessarily as you desired, it might bring down the whole garment. So what I like to do is to do cuffs. You can do them either from ribbing, the same ribbing that you might use for the neckline, or from the exactly the same fabric that you used for your actual t-shirt. Shirt. and the same applies to the neckline. So in my case, I will use this ribbing for both the cuffs on the sleeves and the neckline. I will cut my neckline one inch wide, so it will be two inches altogether. And for the cuffs, we can do the same. The length of the cuffs will match the length of the hem of the sleeves. However, sometimes I like them to be just a tad bit shorter. And the length of the actual neckband will be 20 to 25% shorter than the actual length of the neckline. And I do have a very detailed tutorial on how to insert perfect necklines in knit garments. So for this guidance, definitely check out the video in the info box below. Now place your cuffs right sides together, pin them at the short ends, and we will sew them together with the same zigzag stitch as we constructed the whole garment. Sometimes when I'm sewing just a tiny little seam and the fabric is a little bit thick, I use these two threads at the end of the garment to pull on it a little bit to make it easier for my sewing machine to move. However, make sure that you don't stretch out your fabric too much. We're gonna start with the cuffs of the sleeves. Take the cuff, make sure that you fold it in half, wrong sides together, find the center point of your cuffs, and then match it with the center point of your sleeves, as well as matching the seams on the bottom of the sleeve and on the bottom of the cuff. And then pin it all together and sew it in the round with the same zigzag stitch as we used for the rest of the garment. For the neck band, it's very much the same with a few slight differences. You will also find center front and center back on both your garment and your neck band, and you will line them together right sides and pin them. And after that, you will realize that your neck band is actually smaller than the neckline of your garment, which means that you will need to stretch your neck band in place in order to fit the neckline of the garment. And the way I do that, especially when sewing on a sewing machine, is I pin it in place and then I I take a hand sewing needle and I baste it together to really ensure that when I'm sewing the seam on my sewing machine, I don't have to worry about anything else but making a beautiful clean seam. 
After this, the last step for the neckline is just to sew the seam between the neckline and the neckband and we're using the same zigzag stitch as we used for the rest of the garment. Once you have done sewing on your sewing machine, remove the basting stitch and go ahead and of course press the garment really well so that way the neckline lays nice and neat and flat and it will look like this when it's all done. All right, and now the bottom hem. Now for the bottom, you can also opt to do a cuff, which I actually do quite a bit. But in those cases, when I want a really nice, flat, almost invisible hem, not only on the bottom, but also on the sleeves in some cases, guess what? I do it by hand with a hand sewing needle. It doesn't take as long as it seems, and it really creates that super neat, almost invisible finish. And I know it sounds counterintuitive to do something by hand when you have a sewing machine in your box of tools. However, don't be discouraged to use hand sewing. It creates one of the most wonderful, exquisite, almost invisible finishes that you can even imagine because your hands can always do something that a machine can't. So here I am, I have my hand sewing needle and I'm doing these little stitches on the bottom of my t-shirt. And you see it's pretty easy, you're just grabbing a little bit of fabric with your needle and in and out, in and out, and you're repeating it over and over again. From the wrong side it will look like this, and from the right side it will look like this, almost invisible. And of course, here I used a thread that doesn't really match exactly with the color of the t-shirt, but if you used exactly the same tone, you would barely see the stitches. I want to make sure that I don't do them too tight, but I also want to make sure that they're not floppy and they hold the hem together. And that's it, that's how your t-shirt looks when it's all done entirely on a sewing machine. And that's it, that's all there is to it for sewing a t-shirt on a sewing machine. Of course, as I mentioned, there are many more ways how to do that with many more tricks and many more aces up the sleeve on how to do this or that on your knit garments using your sewing machine. This is just a very basic introduction so that way you feel like you can do that even with those tools that you already have at home. I always say this is the way I do it. There might be a better way for you, so definitely practice, experiment, and simply have fun with it. It's fabric, it's not going to bite you, so definitely have fun with your projects, and until next time, happy sewing. Check out this other video that you see right over here, and I will see you in the next video very, very soon. Don't be scared of sewing knits on your sewing machines. Bye.